Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Today is an exciting day. We finally have the ROG Ally X Hall Effect joysticks from Handheld DIY. And today I'm gonna to be installing them and I'm gonna give you the full tutorial on how to calibrate them, get them set up, and I'll give you a couple of tips and tricks along the way that I found to make things easier. I've also done some testing off camera. Well, actually on camera, I had a live stream. I'll link up above if you wanna see some in-game gameplay. Definitely go check that out. We had a lot of fun and I really appreciate all of y'all who showed up and hung out. Call of Duty matches were pretty insane, especially towards the end. But these things give you so much more range of motion and accuracy and sensitivity. I think it's worth it, 100%. But you should definitely hear my full thoughts as we go along and see if there's any potential caveats that might scare you away. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but it's also not for only the experts either. It's a pretty easy mod that I would rank on a scale of one to 10 being maybe a six. So it's pretty easy. If you've been able to put on these thumbstick caps, like the PS5 thumbstick caps, you could definitely do this mod. It's not hard at all. There's only three screws for each joystick and then you'll just need to calibrate them. But there is a little bit of caveat with that calibration method. It's not as easy as you think, but also not as hard. So let's go ahead and dive right on in and I'll show you exactly how to install them. And then we'll get to the calibration process. And a huge shout out to the channel OGs. Thank you so much for all your loyal support. And I'll leave links below for all of this stuff. And you can use code CPPC tech to save you a little bit of money and help out the channel at no extra cost to you. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing, you're gonna make sure that your ally is turned off and you'll flip it over. I've already removed my back plate, so you need to remove yours. Of course, there's a couple of screws. This screw is captive. Go ahead and remove all the screws out of it. Run your finger along the top edge and then on the sides, and it will gently allow you to open it up like this once all of that stuff is popped off. Then inside of here, you're gonna see that there is a flipper lever. You're gonna gently flip that towards the cable and always be careful with this when you're opening up your ally you don't want to damage this cable you're going to set this down to the side now you can see we've got the hall effect over here and then we've got the stock over here i'm only going to do this side on camera because obviously if you know how to do this side it is the exact same over here there is no difference with the exception of one thing this top screw this top screw is a long boy and all of the others are a short boy. But I'm gonna quickly give you a demonstration of the differences between these two Hall Effect sticks. They're both encapsulated and built into one little unit, so there's no soldering and no tricky business except for the calibration. You can see on the stock board, there are no buttons, but on the handheld DIY, there are two buttons. The K1 button, is going to allow you to calibrate the outer zones or outer limits and then the k2 button is going to allow you to calibrate the center point where it actually is going to center when you put these in from the factory you will have to calibrate them once through the hardware section on the back so you'll need to leave your back plate off or if you are a risk taker you can simply drill two small holes like I did here, and those two small holes will allow you to stick or shove something in there like this little drill bit right here into those holes and end up touching these little buttons. It's riskier, maybe, to some, but if you're gentle and you're careful and you know how to line holes up and drill them or you have like one of these little X-Cool screwdrivers with the drill bits, it's super easy. Just make sure you do this. While the back plate is not attached, mark it with like a pen or a permanent marker and kind of go back and check your work and drill your small holes. And that'll make it where you don't need to pop the back plate off if you ever need to calibrate them again in hardware. But you'll only need to do this once. But here we go. Let's go ahead and swap the stick out and we'll get started. Now, before you do that, make sure you unclip this ribbon cable right there. And that is pretty easy to do. You flip the lever down and pull the cable out. All right, and you'll pull that out just like so. And then you can take your thumbstick cap off gently. If you have the PS5 thumbstick caps, they work perfectly. They both calibrate really well and I haven't had any issues with either one. But keep in mind when you're pressing it on to just go gently 
and you may need to press it a little bit more later if you feel any rubbing but it does work without rubbing i have had no issues with that i think one of them i had to push a little bit firmer but just keep that in mind now if you're going to be putting them on and taking them off be careful always try to push down here and maybe use your thumb for leverage if you end up needing to press it back off you can use your thumb to kind of leverage it up trying not to yank on the joystick itself because you don't want it to break on the board all right so let's go ahead and press fit this on slowly there we go it's on i'm gonna drop this bad boy in another tip is to torque the screws equally don't go all the way down on one until you have them all in and you can slowly kind of torque them down evenly and that will apply equal pressure on the board itself. Okay, so now that's in there, you're gonna take your ribbon cable, slide it in, press the lever down, there we go, now it's locked in place. And then you're going to flip it over while the back plate is off, unless you've drilled your holes, because we're going to need to calibrate these while we're inside the operating system. So let's go ahead and dive into that. All right, so now that we are in Windows, I'm gonna show you the first part, and that's to flip it over. Go ahead and hit that top button one time. Now you're gonna take and rotate this stick around in three complete circles. Just gently doing it is all it takes. If you do four for good measure, that's completely fine. And now you're gonna press that button right there to stop it. And then we're going to check the center to make sure the dead zone or the center zone is good. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is pull up Gamepad Tester. I'll leave the link below for this. Once you pull this up, you'll move your joystick, you'll scroll down and you'll see where it says axis zero and axis one for each side. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is centered and that it says 0 .0002. It's very important that it says 0 .0002 equally on both sides because that means you are centered. If it says anything higher, it does not mean it is centered. If you need to recenter it, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take one hand right here and try to center it until it says 0 .002. And then you're gonna tap that one time and then you let go and then it will be perfectly centered. All right, now I got it. It took me quite a while to get it. That is the trickiest part. Now that you have that over with, you can pat yourself on the back. You now have done the hardest process. That's literally it. If you can hang with that, then you can hang with the rest of these steps. All right, so once you've got the center point set and you've got your outer zones set, now all you have to do is pull up Armory Crate. You're gonna to go to the Calibration tab right here. And I'm gonna show you the left side only because the right side has already been done. So for time's sake, there's no need to show you both sides when the process is exactly the same. So be sure that you do both sides exactly the same. So now you're going to hit A for calibrate, but hold your horses. Here's the pro tip. Reset to default. All this is going to do is just erase any calibration settings or curves, and this will help it a lot. I can assure you that. So go ahead and hit A for calibrate now. Go ahead and make sure that's centered. Hit A. So now you're gonna push it to each side, up, down, left, right, but it'll tell you exactly what to do. Just follow the steps, it's pretty simple. All right, and now you're gonna rotate it in a circle. Don't force it, just gently do it. None of these need to be forced, unlike the originals where some people, including me, had to force the directions in order to register. So you notice I haven't had to force it at all. So this is a huge welcome surprise for me, especially using these PS5 thumbsticks because it was a little pain before. All right, and now we're done. And so we can go back into the Gamepad Tester website and check our calibration. All right, so now we are back in the calibration 
checker or whatever you want to call it we're going to actually test out and see the circularity rate now keep in mind the circularity or error rate as it is being called in this instance isn't bad if it's higher it just means it's not a perfect circle but for first person shooters and certain rpg games you actually have better control when they are not perfect circles you have more range of motion so you can see right there we're under 10 percent on that side and on this side, we are about 11.5%. But on the original ones, they were about the same, but the problem is they weren't always reaching those outer zones and they had a lot of dead spots, especially around this side over here for me. This was pretty dead on my original Ally X. So this is also a welcome touch that we have full control of our sticks and that makes a massive difference in games like call of duty now if you want to take things a step further you can go back into control mode hit gamepad mode and you can go to the left stick and you can set up curves and you can set up dead zones and anti-dead zones so just in the event that you can't get your dead zone perfect you can add a little bit of dead zone right here and that will smooth things out one thing I like to also do is set a curve. I've had pretty good luck with setting these and adjusting them, but I left them default just so you can see exactly how it's going to calibrate. I do recommend if you do set a curve to go ahead and recalibrate it just in the event that things have changed a little bit with the way it responds. Now the next thing we're going to check is the pulling rate. You can think of pulling rate like refresh rate on a monitor. The higher that number, the faster it's going to be able to receive inputs and it's constantly checking for inputs. So basically, if you compare a 250 hertz controller to a 1000 hertz controller, in theory, it should have a lower millisecond response time and it should feel overall quicker. Now, I've ran tests on the stock ones and I've ran tests on these. For mine, they both officially registered at 1000 hertz. But the official spec that I got from Handheld DIY for the original Ally ones was 600 hertz. So I would love to hear if yours from your Ally X are also 1000 hertz like mine, or if they indeed are 600 hertz. And you can check that here. So you're gonna hit one, and then you're going to hit one again for that, and then you're going to rotate it around until it hits 100%. And then it's going to check the latency. Now, the latency minimum is 0.65 milliseconds, and the average is only 1.5 milliseconds, and the maximum is 3.94. When I ran this on the Ally X OG ones, I had a maximum of about 8.5 milliseconds, and then an average of about 4, but the minimal was about 0.65. So you are getting a faster and more responsive stick than the factory and it is going to transfer into faster movements more accurate movements and you're going to feel like you just have way more control over those sticks so overall everything that i've tested on this has just been phenomenal now there's one last and final test that i'm going to do here now and that my friends is to check for interference you guys know that the original ally with the hall effect sticks had interference when you would press this trigger while having your joystick in any direction especially all the way out to the left or to the right on this left side right here so check this out i'm going to hold it with one hand and i'm going to press the trigger with the other so you can see that there is no change in direction and it's not bringing it back. I'm moving it around myself and I'm checking to see if it's moving. My hand is moving, but let's set it down on a steady surface. It's very hard to do this, by the way, on camera. Let me see if I can hold it up like that. And now pressing, see look, even if I'm not pressing anything, I move a lot. There you go, perfect. My hand is moving it, but watch. Not at all, zero movement at all, except for my shaky hands. These things are so sensitive, they recognize the slightest amount of input. It's crazy. And then on the right side, it's the same way. We don't have any movement at all. It's just my movement from my hands. So they're not retracting backwards like they did on the original Ally. And that's because of the magnetic placement that was on the trigger mechanism itself. 
They are far enough away from here that you're not going to get any interference and it looks like you're going to get no dead zone issues, no problems at all. These get my full CPPC tech stamp of approval 100% with only one caveat and that's simply they're a little difficult to calibrate for newbies. For me, it's a breeze. I can do it in a matter of seconds. I really think that you guys should pick these up. If you want to pick up a set, please use my links or the coupon codes below. They will help me out a little bit with the channel and they will cost you zero extra dollars. So I would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you want to see these in action again, we might do another surprise impromptu live stream like we did tonight or last night if you're watching this video today. And I really appreciate all you guys once again for showing up. That meant the world to me. That was such an amazing and fun time and I enjoyed interacting with all of you guys. And I promise the next stream will be even better because I'll have text to speech on and I'll try to have some extra cool things for you guys to check out. When you guys know what time it is, it's about that time to head on out. Huge shout out to the channel OGs again. Thank you guys so much. You are the GOAT, you are the OGs. Very much appreciate each and every one of you guys. And if you want to become a channel member and get access to members only videos or just help support the channel, that link is below. Link's below for everything. Until the next one, I hope you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.